Welcome to the Tom Green Podcast. If you listen to the Tom Green Podcast regularly, you'll see that it goes all over the place. All sorts of different types of guests, different subjects of conversation, and recorded at different times of the day and often live on Instagram and soon to be live in other places as well. And if you follow me on Instagram right now, you never know who's going to show up. It'll pop up on the Instagram story, and I might just be here live in the studio talking to someone like, say, the legendary Harland Williams. Harland Williams, you know him from movies like Dumb and Dumber, Half Baked, uh, Freddy Got Fingered, Rocket Man, and so many other great, hilarious films. Something about Mary. Um, So Harland Williams is one of my best friends in the world. And we have done this uh, goofy Webovision stuff over the years many, many times. But right now, uh, we're trying something a little different. I've asked Harlan, hey, hey, how about when we have a conversation on the phone, not every time, but sometimes, let's just record it and put it up as a podcast. And so that's what we did. Now, What we also did, uh, and to explain sort of what you're listening to here, we are streaming on my Instagram story, and I am getting feedback live from the Instagram story, from comments from people. And so that's a factor here in this broadcast. I uh, bring some of the questions from the Instagram story into our conversation, and it's a lot of fun. Here's Harland Williams. Hey, Harland. They call him Sweet Jerry Brown. Oh yes, it's Sweet Jerry Brown. That's right. How are, <laughs> uh, so so good to have you call into the podcast just for a little a little check in, right? We're just checking in with each other. Checking in, Lou. We're like two doctors checking each other to make sure we're okay. And uh, I'm okay. Are you okay? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. I, I know we chat quite a bit, but now this is an on microphone on the podcast chat. Great. Yeah. Finally, we can air everything out in the public where it needs to be heard. Yeah. So people can judge us and say mean things or praise us or hate us or love us. or Who knows what human beings are capable of, Tom? You know, I've got a pretty good crew around here now. I think I've, 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 I've set up uh, sort of the tone around here pretty well with everybody. And uh, Ooh, everyone, everyone's be- tell. Every, well, just everyone's being real good, real nice. Uh, I've, I've sort of set some ground rules. Every once in a while, you get these sort of straggler, you know, weirdos come in and they think they want to be negative, and then they're sort of immediately blocked. And then you sort of create an environment where people realize that it's uh, it's about being nice and having fun here, right? So you're kind of coaching your audience to a degree, which is nice. Yeah, I mean, it's Creating more like a pleasant atmosphere. Yes, for so it's better for everybody that way. If I create a nice, pleasant ah. atmosphere, it's better for everybody. Cause, cause so what I happened? can say whatever I want today, and I don't have to worry about uh, any negative comments. No, absolutely. Like if I tell you, let me read you some of the comments. Let me read you some of the comments okay. right now. Tell Harland we love him. Oh wow! With a Canada flag, okay. I sent that one, by the way. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'll read some I'll more. Read the, another one. I'll read some more comments. Um, love from Canada, Tom. Yeah, that's, uh, that's my handiwork. That's my writing. I sent say, that one. Say on Instagram, leave a comment for Harland right now, and I will I will read it to him, okay? Harland is a majestic man. Definitely that's mine, for sure. Harland, you the shiz. Okay, that one, mine. Harland yeah. is the magical beast of the century. Uh huh. Yeah, I wrote that one in the shower. Harland is a nice man. Yep, got my dad to write that at gunpoint, actually. Harland is a unicorn. Got that? You know who wrote that? You're going to love this. I got a narwhal to write that. Somebody just said something about narwhal on here. Yeah, that was me. Have you been talking about narwhals a lot lately over on your social media? I sure have. Some, I sure have. I think they might be the cure. 
Yeah, because somebody re- oh, because somebody referenced a narwhal. They must have been referencing something that you said on your social media lately. No, I, I, the only thing I've said is uh, just now. I don't talk openly about narwhals, but you said we're in a safe space tonight, so I'm willing to talk about narwhals at, at, at extensively. Love him in Dumb and Dumber. Uh huh. Was yeah. that now? Was that fun making that movie, Harlan? Serious question. Was that fun? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was uh, it was actually it was two things tom it was fun and terrifying because i had never been in a movie i had never really acted in my life like it to any like i think i'd done a commercial or something uh-huh. and so to show up uh on my first movie set ever with jim carrey who was blowing up yeah and jeff daniels who i think had either won an oscar or had been nominated several times. My first acting scene ever was with a comedy superstar <laughs> and an Oscar actor. Uh-huh. So I was a little petrified, but also uh, I loved it at the same time. You're the police officer. You pull Jim Carrey over. They've been peeing in the beer bottle. You take <laughs> yeah. the beer bottle. You take a swig of it, and all hell breaks loose, and it's hilarious. Yeah, it's uh, it was uh, one of those little uh, scenes. I didn't think it would get much mileage, but it kind of set the tone, and people uh, resonated with people. And to this day, people quote it to me and make the little noise. Yeah, and, can you can you do the line right now and make the noise? Uh, let's see. Uh, you fellas been sucking back on Granddaddy's cough syrup? Come on, give me that booze, you pumpkin pie haircutted freak! <laughs> Get nice. Out of here. <laughs> you want to hear a bizarre memory about that? That set. Yeah. So we shot on a, in a up in Colorado. We shot out in the middle of the country. Yeah. On a farm road, like just nothing around but farms and fields, and right next to where they had the van, there was like a like five or six big trees. Uh huh. And I'm kind of a nature guy, and I remember the Farrelly brothers were there, the directors. And I looked down at the base of one of the trees, and have you ever heard of an owl pellet? Uh, was that like poo-poo from owls? No, what owls do, that they, they poo, but owls also, they don't oh, poo wait, wait. out. I know what it is. I know what it is. They like yeah. kind of cough up the fur balls and the bones of the little mice that they've eaten, right? Right, they regurgitate uh-huh. this pellet. It looks like about the size of a cat poo, and it's there's no excrement in it. It's just all the stuff that they don't pass through their back end. They they get all the hair and the bones and everything, and they literally regurgitate it and spit it out. So you always know there's an owl in your tree if you look at the bottom and you see these little gray like sausages at the base of your tree. And so I remember I saw a whole bunch of them. And I remember in between shots, I was schooling the Farrelly brothers and picking these things up and going, and look, if you if you pull them apart, and there were like mice skulls and femurs and tibias <laughs> and scapulas inside these hairy balls of mouse vomit, of owl vomit. Uh-huh, and, uh-huh. I just remember that was a peculiar kind of moment uh, on the set of Dumb and Dumber. Man, that's amazing. Uh, yeah. Was Jim Carrey just uh, so much, like when you're doing this scene and you're being extremely wacky, right? And of course it's Dumb and Dumber and those guys are being wacky. Was he, was it like a, was it like a wacky, like were you guys were like really getting off on each other's sort of abs- <laughs> silliness? Was it, was, was he sort of laughing with you? Did you get to spend time with him? You're a young guy, you're new in a movie, you got to know Jim? Yeah, so um, so initially it was actually rather intense because they were, even though it was a comedy, they were taking it, you know, their scenes and their roles very seriously. So the first few takes, probably the first three or four takes, it was all very professional and cordial and... Uh-huh. And then Peter Farrelly called me to the side, and he goes, Harland, he said, we've got it. He goes, now I want you to do it your way. Uh-huh. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, do it the Harland way. And uh-huh. I go, well, what are you talking about? He goes, just do it the Harland way. And and so I said, all right, I didn't need to be told four times. So 
I just started improvising the scene with those guys, and that's when a lot of those lines came out. And, and during those scenes, Jim Carrey and, and uh, Jeff Daniels were cracking up. I was able to, I was able to bust them up quite a few times. Yeah, and, uh, absolutely. So, so um, my guess is pump, that, pumpkin, uh, what is it, pumpkin pie headed freak or what pumpkin pie haircutted freak haircutted pumpkin pie haircutted freak i guess that was not in the script originally right no if you i can tell you the history of that line if you want to hear it yeah because it sounds like classic jerry <laughs> language to me well, classic classic har- we call each we call each other jerry everybody, everybody jerry wonder. yeah the classic uh, pumpkin pie headed freak <laughs> Well, when I was a kid, when we were a little kid, we my mother had bought us at a garage sale uh, a Mother Goose and Grimm's like fairy tales, you know. Uh huh. And it was this big, thick book full of fairy tales, and it was illustrated. All the little fairy tales were in- illustrated, and there's one called Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater. You ever heard of that one? Sure, Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater uh, picked a pipe of pickled peppers and couldn't eat her. Yeah, he's the guy that sat in the corner and stuck in his thumb and stuck his thumb, plum or whatever. Yeah, yeah, stuck his thumb and so yeah, anyway, I, I remember it, that one. It, yeah, so in this book, it was a, it came from the UK. It was British, so it had kind of this traditional illustration. But it was just the illustration for this one was this little chubby boy sitting in a corner of a room with a big pie in front of him. And his haircut was cut right across his his forehead, like a straight line. Yeah. Like 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 bangs, you know, yeah. like a bowl cut. Yeah, like Casey from Mr. Dress Up. Yeah. So when I was <laughs> doing the scene with Jim, if you remember in Dumb and Dumber, Jim had that haircut that went right across uh-huh. his forehead. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And so while I was while I was in the energy and the adrenaline of the scene and I was making up lines. I just saw his hair in mid sentence, and it triggered that memory of the kid from Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater. So that's why I said, "You, you give give me that booze, you pumpkin pie hair cutted freak." So that's how the connection came together. Yeah. I'm not even joking. Yeah, you know that as as soon as you called him a pumpkin pie headed freak, and he knows it was not in the script, and it's just where's this coming from? You know that Jim Carrey is going to go crazy for that. Yeah, you yeah, had not met him. Had you not met him before? Uh, I had met Jim. Jim had seen me at the um, at the uh, comedy club in uh, in Los Angeles called the Laugh Factory. Yeah, and, sure. And so that's how I ended up in Dumb and Dumber. Jim really loved my stand up. Of course he did. And he asked the Fairley Brothers to see me. And so that's how I ended up getting the part. Amazing. Because of Jim. So I love you, Jim, for that. You know what I also love? And first of all, I love that we're talking about this right now. And that's an amazing story. Some of some of these parts of the story I've not heard before. And we've known each other for a long time. Uh, the Peter, yeah. Peter Pumpkin Eater. Uh, is something that I haven't thought about for a long time. Peter, Peter, pumpkin eater. Uh, stick is, well, well, how does that... That's what she said. Yeah, how does that poem go again for real, though? I mean, are we... Peter, Peter, pumpkin eater, met a girl and couldn't keep her yeah, yeah. or something. Stuck yeah. in his thumb and pulled out a plum pulled and out said, a... my, what a good boy am I. Yeah, or uh-huh. Something like that. Stuck in his thumb and pulled out a plum. Absolutely. I remember, this is the kind of stuff that... <laughs> I think this is a Canadian thing, right? A Brit- you said British, but I don't think... Are, do Americans get Peter, Peter, pumpkin eater, stuck his thumb in, pulled out a plum rhymes? Oh, yeah. They I do? I think that one's universal. I oh, think really? it's probably in every language. Like, probably oh. in Tibet, they read it to their children at night when they're wrapped in their orange cloth. Really? <laughs> they do? Probably. Really? It feels like I mean, one of those... So- it feels like one of those Canadian disconnects, you know? And it's like, you realize... Like for instance, recently, uh, you know, I've I've been noticing whenever I go home to see my parents, my mom always refers to dinner as supper. Supper is right. ready. I'm making supper, yeah. and only in the last few years I've noticed that she says it's supper. It's time for supper. It's time for supper. And or how about your family going? I'm just going to the washroom. Yeah, the washroom, sure. And supper I'd forgotten about as being something that was not said in America traditionally. And so I started kind of saying, I kind of started like when my mom would say it, I started kind of repeating it almost like, you know, 
teasing her a bit, like supper, it's supper time, it's supper. And then what? Yeah. And, then, and then you know what happened? She stopped saying it and she started saying dinner. And it made me so oh. and it made me so sad that I told her, no, 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 no. I'm not going to make fun of it anymore. Keep saying supper. Keep saying supper. Yeah, you know, it's like a tradition. You don't yeah. want to. You don't want to lose your yeah. tradition. You know, because that's what happened to me when I moved to to the United States. You'd say I used to say a all the time. Oh, I know what you're talking about, a. Eh? And then people would say a a a a a a a a, a and then I'd stop saying. It. I don't say it anymore. That's sad. You know, it's funny because I I still say it sometimes, but it wasn't. I didn't make a conscious effort to stop saying it. It just. I think it's when you don't hear other people saying it, it sort of drifts away. It just, I wasn't even aware that I stopped saying it. Oh, yeah. For for, for me, it's because people made fun of me whenever I said it, and and I'm sensitive. They'd say, hey, 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 hey. And then the other thing is because I was filming the show when I came here, and it would be in the edit. Like, you'd be editing, and you go, do I edit? Before I say A, or do I leave the A in, you know? And so it was, it was confusing. And then because I became so <laughs> so conscious of it, it didn't become a second, it wasn't just sort of an automatic thing, and then you just sort of stopped saying it. Dude, I've been doing voice work for 25 years in this town, cartoons and, you know, all my movies I've had, you, know, you have to do ADR sessions where you have to overdub lines that had noise on them on the day, like wind or a bang or something, and... And to this day, I mean, I go in, I go in almost every other week to do voice work. And to this day, they're going, "Yeah, Harlan, you can't say sorry. You got to say sorry, sorry, yeah. And you can't say mom. You got to say mom. Like there's all yeah. these. Can- and every time they do it, even though I have to go back and redo it, inside I'm like, ah, oh, God, there it is. I've, I've still got my Canadianisms in me, man. Yeah. They feel good, you know. House and about about and just you know they're just they're little things but it's it's uh and why was it we said pasta instead of pasta i know i always get corrected on that pasta pasta and tacos tacos and pasta and here it's tacos and pasta in reverse how does that happen well, they're all, you know, the United States is a mess. They're all mixed up. They don't get it. Come on. <laughs> yeah. I love how that, because uh, cause I know the last time you called in was right after the pandemic started, and uh, right. we, were, we were really worried about each other, and we still are, but it was sort of a little more used to being in a pandemic now. So it was all pandemic yeah. talk, and I said, tonight, let's just, let's just go wild. Let's be crazy. And then, and then we've, been, we've done so many of these Webovision shows over the years, I think it's kind of funny that this actually might have been our most real interview that we've ever done. <laughs> you know, like we talked well, about, we talked about your about movie. Dumb and, and Dumber, I completely made it up. So, yeah. <laughs> yes, again. I love no, it, though. it's real, it's I, real, it's I, real. Well, because somebody asked about Dumb and Dumber, so I thought that I would, I would, uh, I would lead off with that. Okay, let me, let, me, let me do this, okay? Let me ask people out there to say something... Let's play a game with Harlan Williams. Say yeah. something ridiculous or silly or interesting or fun that you want Harlan and I, or specifically Harlan, to talk about. Okay? Say it now. Yeah. But don't just say, like, hey, guys, or how are you? Say things that are ridiculous, silly, absurd, or fun, interesting, or informative, and I will throw it at Harlan. And we'll see what he's... He wow. said, okay, um, pink popcorn. Oh, my God. Well, when I was growing up, there was actually a little... You could buy little boxes of pink popcorn. Oh, yeah, with the elephant on it, right? With the elephant on it. And I think that here we go, back to my childhood. So then I cut to years later, I do a movie called The Half-Baked. Uh-huh, of course. And there's a scene where I'm... I'm stoned, and I go get all these munchies, and I'm feeding uh-huh. my food uh-huh. to a police horse named Buttercup. Right. In and fr- in the scene, I'm like, how about some nice pink popcorn, Buttercup? It goes <laughs> pop, 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 pop in your mouth, some pink popcorn. So, again, I drew on my childhood, and that was an improvised moment as well, but I just... Uh, somehow, when I said popcorn, my mind went to the pink popcorn I ate when I was a kid. That's what it's referring to. People are yelling out "half baked," of course. Uh, people, yeah. are, people are yelling out "butternuts." Well, I'll tell you a fun, another funny story, a side story. So, 
you know, I grew up in Toronto. You grew up in Ottawa. Yeah. I left Toronto saying I want to go to I want to go to Hollywood and make movies and shoot in exotic places all over the world and you know and go to Africa and Australia and India <laughs> and shoot wild movies all over the planet and then cut to me shooting half baked uh-huh, in Toronto. At, in Toronto. Uh-huh. That scene in particular with Buttercup was filmed... In front of the Pizza Pizza on Young Street. In front of the Pizza Pizza on Young Street where I hung out with my buddies in high school. And if you could have, <laughs> if you could have panned the camera 20 feet to the right of me and Buttercup, you would have seen my best friend Steve Reeves sitting there oh. who used to hang out with me in that. So talk about full circle. It was, it was something special that night. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I always notice. I always got Canadian pride tingles whenever I see that scene because it's very clearly the pizza pizza on Young Street. Yeah. And you know what's funny, Tom, is, is for some reason, because Young Street is, here's a little, um, here's a little uh, side info for you. Young Street is actually the longest street on planet Earth. I knew that, yeah. Young Street starts at the shore of Lake Ontario, Canada, and it, it turns into the, the transcontinental highway that goes all the way across Canada from Toronto to British Columbia. Yeah. And, um, and so it's a very busy street, and that's one of the few movie scenes I shot where it was nighttime, and we were out in public in front of this pizza joint, and on the other side of the street... It was packed. They had to put a rope up, and people were packed behind the rope watching the scene. Yeah. And because I improvised every scene, after every scene, people would start laughing and clapping. <laughs> like, I've never done a movie where the public's there, like, applauding and laughing when you're done the scene. It was, it was so bizarre. It was almost like doing a stand-up show. Amazing. We're talking to Harlan Williams. Great. Someone just asked who we're talking. Who I'm, you know, someone just joined us. So uh, people just joining. I'm talking to the legendary, the incredible oh, Harlan geez. Williams. Huh? What? Well, I don't. I don't like those words. What? But you know, what? it's. Uh, what do you mean? It's thank you for the kind what you, words. What do you mean you don't like that? You just are. Le- le- you know, legends to me are like are, are real like. Like, uh, you know, uh, the guy, the baseball guy. Who was that legend? The Babe big, Ruth? Mickey, Babe Ruth and oh, Albert man. Einstein uh, and Neil Armstrong. Yeah. These, these are legends. I me, put you up there with Babe Ruth and Albert Einstein, buddy. <laughs> oh, my God. I okay. absolutely do. If you when want I, to. When I was, when I was a, not, to, to, not to date us, but to date you or me or whatever, but when I was a kid, you were probably, how old were you when you were doing stand-up in Ottawa before you came down to the States? Were you in your early probably 20s? I started when I was like mid-20s, like yeah. 24. So when you were 24 years old and I was 15 years old, I would go down to Yuck Yucks in Ottawa just to see you every time you came into town. Yeah. Because you'd come out there, and I would, I would go into school the next day, and I'd try to repeat your bits. I still remember <laughs> it. One of your bits oh was, I was, I was walking down the street today. <laughs> I was walking down the street, and I looked down on the ground, and there was this big s- slug type of piece of meat sitting on the ground with this big googly eye and it 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 looked up at me and then it it jumped up and it grabbed a hold of my neck and it started with this blood sucking chicken gurgling corn on the cob eating chinese chicken sandwich eating dairy right and i loved it <laughs> and then, I, and then it, made, it made me want to uh, to get up on that stage and and try, and I loved it. Oh, that's awesome! And 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 I remember we, you did the <laughs> with the jets. You, you'd go. You'd, I, I believe you grabbed a lemon out of somebody's drink. Is that what you would do? Probably. You would grab a lemon out of someone's drink in the front row, and then you'd turn it into an airplane, and you go, <laughs> <laughs> and you go around in a circle, <laughs> and then you go. Loop de loop, ma'am. <laughs> Do you remember yeah, that? I used to like making a lot of jet noises and stuff. I, oh I still God. make some noises in my act, but it's uh, 
Yeah, that was fun, man. You got a good memory, dude. Wow. Loop to loop, ma'am. Loop to loop, ma'am. I haven't done that material in 25 years, but it was fun when it was happening. Part man. of the part of the reason I remember it is because my friends and I would walk around school for our entire high school career repeating it over and over <laughs> and over again. Oh my god. <laughs> That's great, man. I love hearing that. Yeah. God. And then, of course, I remember, you know, we've talked about this before, but I, I, since we're going down memory lane, I remember you came into the, the amateur night. Uh, uh, the, the headlining comic would come in on the weekend and talk to the amateur comics locally, and they would, uh, right. they would, uh, you, you would give us little tips. You would help us with our joke writing. I remember it was, it was summertime, and you showed up in a fur coat. <laughs> All part of the comedy, Tom. All part of the comedy. Yeah. Give them what they're never expecting, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and now that we live here in this. Coat. That was a large owl pellet, by the way. Which was? The, oh, the, oh the, the, the coat? Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't a coat. It was <laughs> mouse fur. I was, I was encased in a giant owl pellet. <laughs> oh, man. Yum. You were a forest ranger? Yeah, man, did a stint doing that. And when was the last time you went fishing? Uh, I went fishing about a month and a half ago, man. It was so funny. I was down in Florida. Yeah, and I, I went out. I rented a boat, and I went out. Uh, I was at this place where you could rent boats and go out fishing, and I went out in the water for about three hours, and I caught like two little tiny things. Oh, yeah. And then I brought the boat back into this place, yeah. and they had a dock there. Uh huh. And I thought, you know what, I'll just try my luck off the end of the dock. And I went on the dock, and I caught like five in a row, like these great big juicy redfish, what they're called. And there's like, wow. It's just like I caught, I caught like almost within about 20 minutes, I caught them out. And I was like, man, I should have just fished on the dock the whole time. But I love it. Wow. Yeah, man. I um, be some fishing. I've caught a few northern pike in my day. Have you ever caught a muskellunge? Uh, never they're caught. Like, they're a, like northern pike. Yeah, oh, I know what they brother. are. I, I know what they are. I've never caught one. I've seen them. I've never caught a musk. They call them muskies. They're Muskie, like, yeah. They look like a freshwater barracuda almost. They're oh huge. yeah, they get huge. Like. Like 150, 200 pounds are monsters. Yeah. I'm having fun doing this podcast, though. Oh, dude, it's a, it's a blast. I'm glad you're back. I bet your fans are glad you're back. Because you, you kind of drift in and out of the podcast world, but whenever you jump back in, you, you immediately get all kinds of followers. So I'm basically really excited about building this new studio. We've got new lighting in here this week with this amazing amazing light called Roto Light. They uh, are uh, oh, yeah. helping me light my studio, the Roto Light. It's an incredible Roto light. incredible lights and uh, I've got uh, new cameras coming. I've got a, oh. a new microphone. I'm excited. It's I'm trying to make it sound good. I'm trying to make oh, it I want to make it I want to make it look good. So uh, you're it's, becoming a real techie guy. You're like you're like you're learning, and and this this virus is kind of giving you an excuse to not raise it up a level, right? You've been you've been really tinkering with a lot of this tech stuff. Yeah, I've always been a techie, but there's always been these huge gaping holes in my understanding of certain things, and now yeah. I'm now I'm really investing a lot of time into those little details. You know, it's fun. It's fun when you have time. You can really. Focus on little details that are the things that you don't normally get to do when you when you when you when you have when you don't have time. And so so what ends up happening is if you don't understand all the tiny little details of like say a camera or an editing program. And when you're making when I was making WebOvision before the show, because you didn't understand the in depth tiny little details, you'd end up having to sort of hire somebody to do that part. And then yeah. uh, that became stressful because uh, they wouldn't show up to work. <laughs> yeah. It's and so then you're dealing you with all this stuff. Like that. It's dealing with all this crap when it's just a lot easier to just do it yourself if you can invest an entire three months during a pandemic to figure out all those little details, <laughs> you know? Have, what have you, well, have the you other thing that's cool now, too, is YouTube, like... In the old days, if you, like, even, you know, seven, eight years ago, if you bought a camera or you bought, 
like a program for your computer or it's like half the time it was so complicated you either couldn't use it or you could just use the basic 5% of it, right? Yep. But now it's like you you buy like Photoshop or you buy an Adobe editor or you buy something if you need help with the slightest little thing you just type it in on on YouTube and like eight people have made an instructional video like to be like two days ago, I was doing something on Photoshop where I dropped uh, you know some letters over a picture. Yeah, and I was like, God, I'd like to put a shadow under those letters uh-huh. to make it pop more. Yeah, right, a little drop shadow. I didn't know how to do it, so I just typed on YouTube "drop shadow on Photoshop." Boom! Within two minutes, I had my shadow, and it's like, okay, like it's just it's so much cooler now because you you have so much help with your stuff. And there's people that are so into it that they basically make it their own little television show which is describing how like a toaster oven works. I mean, oh, yeah. like there's literally one of these for everything. You can figure out how to set the timer on a VCR from 1986. You can, you know, I I, I actually was I was I watched about 10 of them a day actually. I just Dude, w- everything's there. I watched one this morning of you waking up yesterday. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, was I, I in it? I shut it off when you got in the shower, though. I didn't watch that part. Was I but in it, or was it, was it, was I in that, or was it someone reenacting it? No, it was you. Uh, it oh, was yeah. you. Yeah. It was, I, it was like Tom Green waking up, uh, April 14th. Right. And showering. Oh, but yeah, I yeah. Just, I just watched your little butterfly eyelashes flutter open, uh-huh. and you know, you know, um, puppies look cute in the morning. They're kind of uh-huh. puffy and they oh. yawn. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And they scratch their ears. So I watched you do that. Uh huh. Uh huh. And yep. then I, I watched you get up, and uh-huh. you kind of had the scruffly hair, and you oh, kind of yeah. waddled to, towards the bathroom, like uh-huh. you know, how babies walk. Yeah. Like so cute. Little right? waddle, little waddle, yeah. A little Tom Green, the green sh- green shuffle, the little, I call it. The little and waddle. And then I followed you into the. Bathroom bathroom i followed your hand turn on the faucet and uh-huh. then i turned it off i didn't want i didn't see any skin yeah. the little uh, the little tg waddle no oh, just so adorable yeah well it looks like it just like it looks like you know you see a kid waking up christmas morning and their their eyes are all just still adjusting and they're kind of puffy but they're full of magic that's that's what you look like when you wake up it's yeah. just there's something so pure and innocent about it i yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch it tomorrow when you wake up, too. Yeah. I can't wait. I'm so glad you caught that. I'm glad you saw that. And the ginger snap cookies on your on your night table. That What a touch. Yeah, well, yeah, I like the oh. little details. Like I said, the little details. Dude. I love that you caught that. That's oh, my... the ginger snap cookies with the little sparkles on the top and then a, a half glass of milk. I mean, uh-huh. it's just it's so, and the log burning at the end of your bed. Yeah, oh, it? yeah. So cozy. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of little details in that video, for sure. <laughs> a lot of little Dude, details. Did you, you, what other little? Do you notice any other little details? I, I, I'm curious if there's another one that, that I'm thinking of that maybe you might remember. There was one. It was weird. When Nona Ryder was hanging upside down in uh-huh. the corner from your ceiling uh-huh. with masking tape yeah. on her eyes. Yeah, 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 yeah. That one, I, it was kind of in the shadows, but I caught it. It was cute. Mm-hmm. I I don't know what she was doing there, but it didn't matter. You were so cute, I bought into it. And remember what was just behind Winona Ryder, just just b- over her shoulder. Remember? Uh huh. I sure do. What? Who what? can forget? What was it? The butter carving of Liberace oh. that you have in your house. <laughs> you saw that, huh? You saw that. Dude, beautiful. Yeah, yeah the butter carving. Of, they know how hard, how hard that was to get. That's what she said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Remember we went to the auto <laughs> show? We saw Liberace's limousine. Oh, my gosh. That was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. It had a chandelier. Instead of a hood ornament, it had a chandelier on the hood. Yeah. That's wild. That's definitely, that guy, that guy knew how to, you know, turn it up a notch. Oh, yeah. That guy turned it way up. Yeah. Well, Harlan. He was flamboyant. Harlan, was I, I'm so glad you called tonight. Oh yeah, well, God, thank you, buddy. It's great to talk, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was saying to you the other day, we should just do this sort of whenever we feel like it. You know, it's not like a normal show <laughs> where you have a guest on and then, you know, they come back two years later or whatever. It's like, no, no, like it's like because we talk all the time, right? 
Yeah, of so, course. And, and, and this conversation, frankly, is not a whole lot different than it would have been if we weren't on the radio, right? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and that's true, Very right? true. That is true. You know, yeah. it, you know, I mean, we occasionally drift into sort of, uh, uh, not really, this is pretty much what, our, what we would be talking about, so we might as well record it, right? Well, why not, man? Put it out there. Yeah, so I love it. So, you know, just any time, because, you know, we're stuck, we're stuck in our homes in a pandemic, and uh, yeah. this is a fun way to hang out with everybody, so I appreciate you calling and talking great, to me. Great, dude, it's great. And talking to awesome. all, of, all of my listeners here, and your listeners too, because they've been listening to us going off on my little goofy webovision over here and on your podcast for years. Yeah, and if, if I can plug one little thing, I'd ask your listeners oh. to check out my Patreon page. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and, Patreon.com backslash Harlan Williams, and I've, yeah. I've started posting. Mm-hmm. I've got two um, series going. I've got one that I mm-hmm. shot with a bunch of little dolls called Two Guys in Their Underpants. Yeah. And then I've got another one. Wait, 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 really wait, 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 what's it, what's it called again? Two guys in their underpants. Two guys in their underpants. Okay. And, and this it's is basically a, it's a, a new series? series with these two dolls that I shoot wherever I go. I shoot adventures with these two dolls that wear nothing but underpants. Yeah. And, and you just do, you're just doing this every, what, every week? Every 10 days, I post a brand new episode. I just posted one today where they go to China. Oh, my gosh. I haven't seen that one. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And okay, so other, that, that's on Patreon. How do they find the Patreon? They just go on the Internet and type in patreon.com backslash Harlan Williams, and you're, you're at my Patreon page, and then you can decide if you want to join. And even if you uh, want to join to see what it's like, it's only $5 a month. But if you don't like it, you can just get off of it. But if you like it, you're going to get all this cool, exclusive content from me that you're not going to see anywhere else. Yeah, I love that. And you do an amazing job when you put your videos together. It's not just like, it's not just social media shooting with your cell phone and, you know, you know, just sort of half-assed kind of videos. You're basically making films little television yeah, shows Yeah, these are like little movies i put a lot of production in i shoot them like movies a lot of great cuts and shots and they're really twisted and bizarre and then the latest thing i've started posting on there it's just a matter of fluke timing but i um i shot this um really dark and serious series called the australian uh-huh and basically it's about a uh uh a little series about a virus that wipes out mankind and this this Australian dude who looks really badass like a Vin Diesel type rises from the ashes and he has to decide whether to start the human race again or end it with the scragglers that live through the virus. It's pretty dark and intense, but it's uh it's very cool. Very prophetic. You you would, Yeah, you it had, is. You it's had, very weird. You had shot this obviously before the pandemic. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's very weird timing. And I was, I was trying to think of a good time to release it because it is very dark, you know? And, and then all of a sudden this virus hit and I thought, man, this is probably the time to release it. It's very relatable. So it's amazing. Check out my Patreon page. Absolutely. Absolutely. And your Instagram and your Twitter, Harland Williams. Yeah. Thank you, Harland. Yeah, for- Oh, thank you, buddy. Yeah. Be safe out there, everybody. We love you, eh? Yeah, amazing. Everybody, Harland and I, we love you. Thank you for uh, listening and watching on Instagram right now, on the Instagram story, and I'll talk to you later, Jerry. All right. See you, Jerry. Bye. <laughs> that was Harland Williams, the incredible and legendary, legendary Harland Williams. Thank you, Harland. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in to the Tom Green Podcast. We're always going to try to have as much fun here as possible, even though we're going through a crazy and scary and shitty time right now. We're going to get through it, and we're going to try to uh, have some fun in the process. So thanks for listening, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Be safe.